What's up, guys? It's KB. Make sure you subscribe to the Underground Sports Philadelphia YouTube channel. Click the bell icon down below so you don't miss a single video from us. And thanks for tuning in to another video from Underground Sports Philadelphia. Now let's get into it. Philadelphia, baby. You're going to love it. Best sports fans in the world. Actually the worst, but that's what makes them the best. What is going on, everybody? Welcome into episode number 591 of Underground Sports Philadelphia, presented by the city of Vineland. It's KB coming at you from Underground Studios and joining me like he does on every football Sunday. And by the time you guys are listening to this, it's a Monday. It's the host with the most, the people's champ. He's rocking a beanie, Mr. Patty Pitts. Yeah, I'm repping a beanie of uh, the next New England Patriots quarterbacks alma mater. So, uh, you know, trying to get it early. What what hat is that? LSU. <laughs> oh, you're on the Jalen Daniels hype? Um, I'm on I'm on either Baker Mayfield or Daniels. <laughs> Polar opposites. Yeah, you got to you got to toe the line. <laughs> it's either extreme excitement or accepting accepting the disappointment and it's just that's what we'll get we'll get to the tankathon update for you later oh my god i can't i can't fucking wait man (laughs) i can't wait um it was a rough one for the birds they lose to the 49ers um congratulations to the 49ers fans on winning their super bowl today Mm -hmm. um we'll get into that we'll get into the sixers the flyers some Philadelphia wingies as they win their season opener. I was there. We'll talk a little bit about that. But, of course, we'll go in-depth on that on the Outside the Box podcast, which you guys should also subscribe to. Um, we'll get into Brink Bonk Bump of the Week, Pitts' power rankings. We'll spin the wheel. We'll have some fun. We'll take your mind off of the the nonsense that happened uh, in this game Not today. the good kind. Not the good kind. No. But before we get into all of that, make sure you guys are following us on the socials at Underground PHI, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Threads, Facebook.com slash Underground Sports PHI, Twitch.tv slash Underground Sports PHI. I've been hearing some rumblings, some sources telling me that potentially um, there might be some streaming happening on our Twitch channel, potentially that makes a lot of sense for the brand. Uh, coming up with a new season of a certain game that has made a resurgence. Uh, who knows? Uh, but that's why you got to follow us over there, too. And you can follow us. Uh, you can follow Pitsy on Twitter at Pat underscore Pitts and at Pitsy35 on the gram. And you can follow me at KBIZZL311 and KBIZZLE11. Subscribe to the podcast feed. Apple, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts. Leave a five-star rating and review. I know Matt and I talked about it on uh, Thursday show that came out on Wednesday night when we recorded. But uh, big thank you to everybody that uh, listens to us, all the Spotify wrapped uh, content coming out and letting us know that you uh, listen to our show. We had some crazy growth on Spotify this year. And to see that, you know, in year five of this show is really, really cool. Just goes really to show cool. you that we're really still cool. growing, still moving this thing along and, um, it's all because of the people listening at home. So shout out to you. And if you guys still have your Spotify rap, would love to see them, um, tweet them at us, post them on Instagram, tag us. And, uh, of course leave a five-star rating and review goes a long way for helping the show continue to grow and subscribe to the underground sports, Philadelphia, YouTube channel, youtube.com slash at underground sports, Philadelphia. That's where you get full video episodes of this show. Twice a week, you get full video episodes of every show on our network in video form. Clips, shorts, live streams, original video content. It's all on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash at Underground Sports Philadelphia. Now, Pitsy, I was doing a little research because we are somehow, some way in the final month of 2023. It doesn't seem real. Does not um, seem real. This is our first full year on YouTube as well um doing it from january to december i was looking at our subscriber growth just to compare it to last year when we started youtubing in april of last year um where from april to december we gained 347 subscribers on the channel of 2022 into 2023 now in 2023 from january to december 
3rd as we're recording this, we're, we've gained 305 subscribers. Let's go. So, my goal, before the end of the year, we need to get more subscribers than we had in 2022. Fair goal. I think that's a fair goal. We need... Uh, math is hard. 347 minus... Not for everybody. 305. We need 43 more subscribers to beat that goal. And if we get 45 more subscribers, we hit 700. Oh, by the come end of on. The I think we need 45 we subscribers before the end of 2023. I think we can do it. Let's make I, that I happen. I really think... Because then the we go into 2024 hitting a thousand and feeling good and really cranking out numbies. Mm. So let's subscribe, get 45 more subscribers before the ball drops on New Year's Eve. Needs to be done. That is company wide initiative. I think we can do it. Let's make it happen. We are going to be down your throats. Pause. Bonk. All of our socials posting to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Every single day until the end of the year. So if you Do want it. it to, if you want to stop seeing the spam, you subscribe, subscribe and then you tell your friends to subscribe and tell their friends to subscribe, and then it happens, and then we it's all a numbers game, and we get to do really fun shit. So go subscribe, youtubecom slash at Underground Sports Philadelphia. And like I mentioned, this show is presented by the City of Vineland, mm-hmm. and the City of Vineland Municipal Calendar features city organized, city sponsored, and city affiliated events. That are of public interest. The calendar, which is accessible at VinelandCity.org, is a good way for residents and visitors to build awareness, remain engaged with city government, and participate in local events. You can also follow the City of Vineland on social media via their Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and YouTube pages. And through these tools, you can stay connected to the community and get important announcements about programs and services offered by the city. Vineland, New Jersey, where it's always growing season. And big thank you to Security 21 Security Systems and Paul J. Gillespie Incorporated for their continued support of this podcast. Pitsy, it was a miserable, miserable NFL Sunday for the both of us. For the it's both. brought to you by our awesome merch partners at PHI Apparel Company, the best merch partners in the game, where you can get your Philly Dog shirts, your Underground Sports Philadelphia Podcast franchise shirts. You can get Eagles, Phillies, Flyers, Sixers, Union merch. From the best in the game. It's the best quality, best hoodies, best shirts, best just overall Philly fan experience. I still got to get that OnlyFans shirt. It is. Oh, that's money. That's so funny. The best. Um, and if you want to stand out in the crowd, whether you're going to the link, going to the lots, all that good stuff, go to phiapparel.co. If you're watching on YouTube, you see it scrolling on the ticker phiapparel.co use code underground you get 10 percent off any and all merch orders it's the most effective and direct way to support everything we're doing here at underground sports philadelphia if you want to see us continue to do dope stuff create awesome content get your merch tweet it at us tag us on instagram we want to see where you're rocking your merch from phiapparel.co code underground for 10 percent off your order pitsy like i said it was a miserable nfl sunday for the both of us the birds Awful. fall to the 49ers 42 to 19 just could not get anything going uh offensively to answer the 49ers adjustments um that was the tale of this game um i still don't understand why brian johnson just refuses to use deandre swift uh as the primary running back it drives me absolutely up a wall the first two drives the eagles had in this game offensively were the best two drives sands a touchdown that they've had all season in my opinion they worked the game the game clock well uh they were they were very precise and meticulous moving the ball down the field smart football it just didn't result with them getting in the end zone and as ike reese eagles legend always says touchdowns greater than signed field goals when you start a game against a good team like the 49ers and yes the 49ers are a good team you can't put up six points as opposed to 14 that's a huge difference in terms of momentum swing in terms of confidence in your own team in terms of killing their confidence mm-hmm. you know being down 14 nothing is it feels insurmountable at some points 
being down six nothing, like you score a touchdown, your kicker hits the extra point, you're you're in it, and that's exactly right what the Forty Nine ers did. They scored six touchdowns on six straight drives. The defense, the run defense, just got gashed up and down the field. Um, there yeah, was, it was not like a good day for you guys. No answers whatsoever. And Jalen Hurts had all the time in the world to throw the ball today. All the time in the world. Receivers were just not getting open. Some of them were, you know, there were some questionable calls where, um, you know, pass interference or holding should have been called on a few instances against the 49ers mm -hmm. that were not called. Um, yeah, I saw a lot of those today. I saw a lot of those missed calls today. Does it change the overall course of the game? Probably not because you still got your ass beat. Like you still. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you came to that conclusion that it's like, yeah. like the the calls could have swung things one way or the other and, and made a difference in terms of you putting points on the board and making you have confidence in yourself moving forward from that point in the game on. Yeah, sure. absolutely. But... but at the end of the day, you, you let a team who talked all this shit all summer long, all week long this week. Let them back it up, and they punch you in the mouth at your own in your own dojo. That's just, it was just unacceptable. Got to clean up a lot of the stuff. Um, it was just not a good performance for the Eagles. And once no, again, no, no. I think we talked about this earlier this year after the Jets lost, you and I. Whenever Jalen Hurts throws the ball 45 times or more, he hasn't won a single game. Pitts, can you guess how many times Jalen Hurts threw the ball today? At least 45. He threw it 45 times today. Numbers don't lie. Check the scoreboard. Like, you need to have a balanced approach to your offense. And, like, sure, were you picking up three yards of carry on the ground running it with DeAndre Swift most of the time? Yes. But guess what? Second and seven is a much more manageable down than dropping back to pass and getting fucking sacked and it being second and 19. And then See, you my, can't run the ball. My thing is like, why are they not utilizing Swift more? And, and it's is not as good as mine. It, but it's been a notorious thing with him that no coach just wants to make him essentially the bell cow when he has all the tools to do so. It just boggles my mind. It's it's crazy to all of us. You know, it's one of those things that it's like, he is your best running back. Use him. By far. Um, like, I want to see what he finished with stats-wise today in terms of running the ball. DeAndre Swift finished today. Pitsy, can you guess his stats today? Uh, I'm going to go. Outside of Jalen Hurts, he was the team's leading rusher. But it's not good. Nine carries for 62 yards. I fucking wish. Uh, oh. Six carries for 13 yards. The leading, he was the leading rusher? Outside of Jalen Hurts, who ran the ball seven times for 20 yards and a touchdown. Dude, like, that's you know just who, basic. You know, you know who our second leading rusher was after uh, Jalen Hurts and DeAndre Swift? Sorry, Boston Scott. Third leading rusher. Uh, no, Boston only had one carry for two yards. It was Marcus Mariota who ran the ball two times for six yards when Jalen Hurts was... Marcus Mariota got into the game? Yeah, because apparently Jalen Hurts was being evaluated for a concussion. Oh, okay. That was probably when I went upstairs to see my dad. Okay. Like, you shouldn't lose a game to the 49ers where A.J. Brown has eight catches for 114 yards. Devontae Smith has nine catches for 96 yards and a touchdown. Kenny Gainwell had a good game in the receiving game. He had five catches for 42 yards. That is good. But, like, I I also think one of these things, too, that, you know, now that this Eagles gauntlet is, is going to wrap up next week against the Cowboys, the number one thing that was obvious in this three-and-a-half game stretch of this gauntlet, mm -hmm. Eagles missed Dallas Goddard. It's so evident. Yeah. From his pass blocking to his run blocking to his receiving ability, the number one thing, like the Eagles were able to squeak out a win against the Chiefs. They were able to overcome mistakes and Josh Allen being old Josh Allen and winning in mm -hmm. overtime against the Bills. And then you get punched in the mouth against the 49ers. But you didn't have Dallas Goddard in all three of those games. You didn't have him for half of the Cowboys game the last time you played them. 
Dallas Goddard is such a pivotal part to this offense that not having him has really like shown itself. And I think against the Chiefs and against the Bills, that's why you saw AJ Brown kind of like disappear because mm-hmm. you didn't have Dallas Goddard out there to get those underneath routes and draw somebody off of AJ Brown. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you didn't. Yeah, and, it seems like you need a replacement. And well, luckily Dallas, I, is, he's supposed to be back next week. I'm just saying there is a former Eagle, which I am all on board with. Is uh, now a free agent. He yes. was released from the Cardinals. Shout out JJ Watt for the report. And I, I don't see why not. It makes too back. much sense. It like, makes wait, too much wait. Sense. It doesn't matter if he makes sense for the team or not. I think if anything, he just brings the team together, and then also he adds that on-field presence too, where you can throw him and Goddard. On the field, do two tight Which ends. He did the whole time that they were both here. You know what happened? But then Ertz kind of trans. It, it's very similar to because it really wasn't that way when Ertz was still here with Goddard. And yes, what Pitsy is alluding to is the Arizona Cardinals granted Zach Ertz's request of a release. He cleared waivers. He's free to sign with any team. Eagles are allegedly trying to re-sign him, as are some other teams. That it makes a lot of sense for him to go there as well. But. Towards the end of Ertz's tenure here, he was still like a pass catching tight end, like still doing traditional type of stuff there. Where when Ertz was coming up, we had Brent Selleck here. Brent Selleck wasn't like a notorious pass catching tight end. Like he had his moments and everything, but he was a very elite blocking tight end. You're gonna if you're gonna re-sign Ertz, he's going to have to accept the fact that like he's not gonna be the number one tight end option, which I feel like he would know. Yeah, that's I wouldn't be too worried about that. And Ego coming in, he's familiar with the offense. He was here in 2021 when Sirianni was hired, and you just have to make sure that the the role is defined for him. And I see no issue with it, especially since Grant Calcaterra is injured as well. Like, you're thin at tight end, and to bring in a guy like Zach Ertz, who is 11 catches away from breaking the Eagles' all-time receptions record held by Harold Carmichael, why would you not want to bring Zach Ertz in? Like, and the Arizona Cardinals are the ultimate poverty franchise, too. Like, in order to deem Zach Ertz's request for a release, he had to give and surrender a game check from his his salary this year like ultimate poverty franchise what a loser organization uh, yeah i didn't i i thought i was in the minority when i thought that was weird of them to do it's so strange like why like, like ju- fucking st- broke boys like that's so dumb that like, just shows how little some franchises care about their players mm-hmm. it, it's mind boggling to me and that, like that franchise would do that. I don't know. We're very lucky. They're they're such a poverty franchise. I never want the Arizona Cardinals so long as Jonathan Gannon is their head coach to ever experience happiness, um, because he cost us a Super Bowl. So I will I will never want the Arizona Cardinals to see success so long as he is their head coach. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, it makes too much sense. Like Zach Ertz said when he left here, like you know he's a California kid, but like Philadelphia's home, mm-hmm. like. Bring him home. Let him finish his career here. Let him go out with a bang with the fans. Like he deserves that. Mm-hmm. Um, you're never, you're never going to think about Zach Ertz's tenure with the Arizona Cardinals in his career, ever. And give him another shot at getting another ring. Why not? Why not give him another shot at this point? And you already said it. Like at this stage, he doesn't need to be the number one tight end option. He just needs to be a cog in the machine. And at this stage of his career, why wouldn't you be for the team that gave you everything? Give them a little help on the other end. I don't know. And you know who else should be doing the same thing? The Eagles should be signing two players this week. Shaq Shaq Leonard needs to be a Philadelphia Eagle. Formerly known as Oh, that's easy. Um, He was waiting until the game was done today to announce his sign, which I saw so many people being negative about they're like if he's doing this what else does he have to see i don't want him it's like maybe he's not 
trying to maybe he's trying to not be a distraction to the Eagles or to the Cowboys. Like, sure, the Cowboys were off this week, but like maybe he's trying to like let the teams play and do their mm-hmm. thing, and then go into a new week fresh, can practice all that kind of stuff. Yeah, like. We're talking about a guy who's a former three-time first-team All-Pro in the NFL who, before his back injury, was considered the best linebacker in the NFL. And I'm I'm no, no disrespect to any of the Eagles linebackers. Shaq Leonard right now is probably better than all of them. Probably. I mean, it's Shaq Leonard. The man was so dominant in Indy for so long. A turnover machine. It no makes, Nick Sirianni. Yeah, it, it again makes too much sense, and I don't know. I think the way the Colts released him too was a little odd, especially having him come back and in the yeah. crowd. That was weird. I, that had left a bad taste in my mouth. So why not, if you're the Eagles, bring him in, especially with you know the loss this week. Spirits are down, whatnot. You have to game plan. It was very game. evident that the linebackers were bad today, too. Like, you need to improve. Only helps. Only, it only enhances my... He passed his physical with the Eagles, and, you know, I, what's the worst that can happen? Yeah. Like, and you're preventing him from season. going to the Cowboys. That's, I think, the real reason you should sign him. Plus, let's not forget... In 2015, Shaq Leonard tweeted, LOL, Cowboys suck. Oh, you know that. Can't sign with the Cowboys. No. We know the internet by now, Kyle. You know as soon as it says if he does sign. Actually, it doesn't matter wherever he signs because that tweet is still Mm -hmm. going to come up regardless whether it's Cowboys suck, he's an eagle. Hey, this man's a true eagle at heart. Or then you have him sign with the Cowboys and it's, oh, this man a hypocrite. Like, I don't know. Or money talks, is it? I don't know. I just... I think today should be evidence to Shaq Leonard, too, that, like, the Eagles linebackers are bad. And if he wants to go to a place where, one, he thinks he can win, Philadelphia, obviously, is one of those places. uh, And he's going to get ample playing time after today. Like, that should be a number one thing for him is like he, that was a big reason why he wanted his release from the Colts was he was not getting playing time. He's going to get playing time. If he signs with the Eagles, a thousand percent, that's all he wants. So like he should 100% be a Philadelphia Eagles. Zach Ertz should be as well. And you revamp, you reboot and you get ready for the Cowboys this upcoming week. And let's also not forget. And I'm not even like blaming the schedule because you play who's on your schedule when they're on your schedule. But let's take a quick look into the the facts of this game, Pitsy. Um, mm-hmm. The Eagles have played three games in 14 days. The 49ers have played one game in 10 days. Okay. Who look like Someone's the more rested tired. team? Someone's Who looked like the more rested tired. team today? Like Easily the Niners. They, look, they were storming down your throats. Um, before we keep it pushing with the, the main story from this game, uh, I want to talk to you guys about our pals over at FOCO. If you want to be the best, dress the best, and just look absolutely dashing in some Eagles overalls, an Eagle Santa hat, or Pitsy's personal favorite, the captain's hats. Uh, oh, my God, dude. You're, you're going to make me. You're going to make me. That might be my attire to mania, man. Who knows? Plus, the absolutely outstanding bobbleheads that FOCO has to offer. Uh, check out everything on their website, just FOCO.com. The, our link is in the description. Uh, if you want to gear up for the postseason with Eagles overalls, all the Eagles wives and girlfriends have been wearing them. Um, fans have been wearing them to the tailgates. You saw me wearing the Phillies ones during the postseason. Oh, it's the same type of thing, just the Eagles designs. That. And uh, they look absolutely fantastic. And they have Midnight Green and Kelly Green. So you can pick your your choice there. Uh, click the link in the description. Go support our pals over at FOCO. Plus, they're Eagles fans, which is great. And you want to support oh, fellow Eagles fans, go support FOCO. Um, speaking of supporting, uh, Big Dom, Eagles head of security, Pat Pitts. Yeah, dude. Let it out. Let he it is, out, man. He is a Philadelphia legend. Um amongst Eagles fans and knowing who Big Dom is. One of the nicest people. 
Um, he's got a, a shirt available, the Eagles Autism website as well, with his face on. He's got a beret. Absolutely magnificent. And it, all the proceeds go to supporting the Eagles Autism Foundation, which is fantastic awesome. uh, charity that the Eagles run with Jeffrey Laurie and everybody from the Eagles. Um, Big Dom was thrown out of the game today for for standing on business. Big Dom was standing on business. Now, I've seen all the reports, and this is where I'm going to lean into this too. I've seen all the reports where he's a non uh, player, coach, or referee, so he can't interfere with the players and everything like that. Uh, security is not there for the players. It's there to make sure nobody goes on the Blah, blah, blah. Um, well, when you have one of the most notoriously dirty players in the NFL, in Dre Greenlaw, look at, look it up. Just search Dre Greenlaw and you'll find every player he's ever injured, the games he's gotten thrown out of. He is notoriously like a dirty player. He's like a, a light version of Vontez Perfect. Um, he's a dirty player and he fucking suplexed Devontae Smith to the ground unnecessarily out of bounds like there was a penalty there and then he's still talking shit doing and a whole skirmish breaks out and big dom is just standing on business doing what he's supposed to do making sure a player on the team that he works for as the head of security is okay and is just separating the mm -hmm. the skirmish and diffusing the situation all he's doing yep to which then Dre Greenlaw like takes a jab and like jabs in the face of Big Dom, and both guys get ejected from the game. Yeah, dude. I when you told me we have to talk about this tonight, first off, didn't know who Big Dom was because Boston. But I watched this play happen live and was so confused why Dre Greenlaw was punching. Like, and he didn't get thrown out, like, or he did get thrown out, whatever. But, but he was just still chilling on the sidelines. Like, you got ejected. Yeah. Get the fuck out of the yeah. game, dude. Like, like, Dom Dom literally was totally ejected, turned around, and just walked back, head down, standing ovation. Got a standing from, ovation. Standing ovation from the Philly faithful. On his Trey and, Turner shit. And, like, for no reason, why is he getting thrown out? He The dude was supposed to be stopping this. He didn't throw a punch. He probably said, like, hey, back it up, bud, or maybe another expletive. Like, it doesn't matter. You're just saying chill out. But now and apparently Big Dom is going to face, uh, quote, this comes from uh, Pro Football Talk, Mike Florio. Apparently Big Dom is going to face a severe punishment, and the Eagles are going to also face a severe punishment. That's horseshit to me. And then they're what? trying to compare it to the kid who got his credentials suspended for the rest of the season uh, that worked for the NFL. But that's even the, stupider. The Tyree Kill phone yeah, that, thing. That, that, that's even stupider. Also dumb. And like that whole discourse, we could do a whole podcast. Oh, that, that I, but Kyle, I could go off on that. I we, was having a brain aneurysm that. seeing people like defending the NFL. Mm -hmm. um, but the fact that the Eagles are potentially going to get in trouble for Big Dom. Literally the head of security. <laughs> like, to me, the head of security it. getting thrown out of a game feels like a liability issue. Yeah, that that's the type of nonsense that don't make sense, Kyle. Security like, is there it didn't to happen, enforce. but, like, imagine if somebody tried to run on the sidelines and run on the field and Big Dom's not there. The head of security is not there to protect the people on the sidelines. Now, how, how, how do you think the NFL would have to explain that one? They wouldn't have an explanation. They wouldn't. They you wouldn't. Know, you threw away the guy to stop that shit from happening because he was trying to stop something from happening to one of the coaches or players to keep the game safe. It's just a men It's a game of mental gymnastics that hurts your brain when you think too hard about it or think too much about it. Because it makes zero sense. None. Like, there's no reason he should have gotten tossed. And I saw a video today, too. Shout out to my boy Kyle Pagan from Crossing Broad. He tweeted it out. I'll send it to you so you can see it. Um, apparently, there was, like, a skirmish on the sideline in the Browns and Chiefs game earlier this where year. Was the, where was that head security? Ready? Ready for this? There's a skirmish happening. All this stuff. Greg Lewis, the wide receivers coach for the Chiefs, former Eagles wide receiver, 
former wide receivers coach for the Eagles, pushes a, a Browns player away, like pushes the player away, okay, to defuse the situation. Greg Lewis was not thrown out of the game, and upon further review, a penalty was called on the Browns player. And nothing happened to Greg Lewis. He pushed a player. Big Dom didn't lay a hand. He did not Greg lay Lima. a hand. He didn't. I, I like third party here. Dude didn't lay a hand. He just stood in the middle of all of it happening. He and did the the normal like, hey, let's back it up. Yeah, there was no his hands were here, not here. They weren't in fighting position. I just could you know not believe that both guys got thrown out. Dre Greenlaw is a scumbag player. Like he is, he is notoriously a dirty player. Like I'm gonna Google it right now. Dre, Google it up. Google it Greenlaw. up. Greenlaw. Uh, let's see. Injuries. Let's let's see it. Dre Greenlaw, uh, dirty player. What? Yeah, I wonder how uh, many. Here like, go. here we go. Uh, most notably last year against the Chargers, Dre Greenlaw against Justin Herbert. He was the one that went helmet to helmet as Justin Herbert's being tackled down, and then his head oh, I do remember this. forward and just clocks yeah, him. Yeah, I, 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 I do remember that actually. I do. Remember uh, that. Let's see. Forgot that was him. There's another one. There's definitely, like... Here, Niners Nation this year. Kyle Shanahan speaks on Dre Greenlaw's penalties. <laughs> Multiple. Shanahan acknowledges that Greenlaw is, quote, towing the line, but recognizes Dre has kept himself out of trouble. When you have those quotes about a player and their on-field performance... Well, he's keeping out crazy. of trouble, Kyle. Kyle, he's keeping out of trouble. It's, it's an active crazy. process. Like, that That is just showing you that that player is a dirty player. Yeah, it's a dirty player that should not be the – he should be the one being thrown out, not the head. This of this article is from 2023 in September, this year, September. Greenlaw has been flat – and he's, there's probably more this year since this article. Uh, he's been flagged six times for unnecessary roughness um, since 2022. That's a lot. So, from 2022 to late September of this year, he's been flagged six times for unnecessary roughness. That's a lot. That's a lot. That's like a that, lot. that. That that is a that is not an accident. That is that is a history. Like, Buddy's got a whole fucking document locked and loaded of how many times he's gotten unnecessary roughness penalties. Like. He's a dirty player. They should find him. They really should find him. I mean, but you know they won't. It's the no know, they're fun too busy. League. They're too busy punishing kids living their dreams. And no, they they're too busy it. trying to ban the tush push. Yo, yo. You want to have that conversation right now? Let, let's have that conversation. Why not? There's nothing really to take away from this game, so let's no, have that really conversation. Nothing. No, um, Kyle. Kyle, Remember what we were that. talking about last week too? When we had we were talking off pod when this happened, we were doing like a little content call we had to just prep for upcoming content. And I said, "There's a lot of parallels with ourselves and another media company with successes and things." A lot of parallels. That media company has had a lot of run-ins with the NFL and some bullshit that the NFL has thrown a lot down. A lot of run-ins. We seems like we're going down that path, Pitts. No, if you want to go down that path, I'll, Roger I'll Goodell go is out of his goddamn mind if he thinks the tush push should be banned from the NFL. Like, buddy, what are we fucking talking about? And I love what you have said on this podcast, and I saw you tweeted it at somebody that you'd be a hypocrite for saying that it should be banned. Oh, because a thousand Tom percent. Brady did it for twenty years. Yeah, and in. Uh, this is where I really own the moniker of champion of peeps because I see things from this level. I remember in college, I had Broch, friend of the show. He said that out of all the annoying Patriots fans that he has dealt with in New England at, at, at Quinnipiac, I was the only one he could have a conversation. You are hands about, down the most tolerable Patriots fan I've ever met in my entire life. 
Because they see things from both sides. It's so easy. And that is that is not because you work for our company. That's not because you're my boy. Like, literally, on the surface, you are the most tolerable, like, level-headed Patriots fan I've ever met in my life. Because it's, it's not hard. <laughs> it's, <laughs> literally. It's not. Because... And for example of why I'm getting even heated about this is because all the tush push is is bending the rules and knowing the rules to the point where you can use it to That's your That's what advantage. it is. It's knowing the rules and it's knowing no- how to perform under said rules. And what have the Patriots done for 20 years? Belichick knows the rules so much. He's like a goddamn AI spewing out facts about the rules and historic players from decades that no one on this current earth was even around for because he knows that and what did he do with that knowledge he incorporated into his game the two tight ends the baltimore Ravens situation where john uh i always forget i was get john john's the coach of the ravens yes where john harbaugh literally had a meltdown and uh hissy fit to the point where he had to expose the Patriots for Deflategate, the biggest witch witch hunt in professional sports, because he got out coached, and it would be very hypocritical of any Patriots fan, let alone NF, any NFL team or a fan, I mean, to want the tush push to be banned. Because guess what, Kyle? They're using it themselves. They're starting to use it. You saw Jalen Hurts use it today. Great. Um, I'm pretty sure I saw someone on Thursday night use it. Like, everyone's using it. CJ Stroud did it multiple times today. That's what, yeah, I couldn't think of that one. And, like, it's not the tush push. It's more like the ass grab or the butt throw. or what? If, just think of different the words. The brotherly show. shove. There you go. Like, you're just thinking of different words to just see what it is. And they found out that they can use it. So they're doing it. And if it's a cheat code, well, hey, D- DCs, how about we figure out a game plan to Plus, stop it? 75% of the time, they're not even pushing them. No. These guys know how to quarterback sneak. They just line up with the guy behind them just in case. Yeah. Like, it's- is Diana Rossini po- posted this in The Athletic. Um, and this is the the pull quote here it's apparent this is going to be heavily debated among the competition committee made up of owners gms and coaches it's important to note that there isn't a single person from the eagles organization on the competition committee huh i wonder why um however three really? of their divisional opponents are represented new york giants <laughs> no no that's not real New York Giants owner John Mara, Cowboys COO Stephen Jones, and Washington Commanders head coach Ron Rivera. Though it will all come down to the voting, the most important uh, opinion about the play may come from NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell. I was told by a league source that Goodell wants to see this play removed from the game permanently. Um, Guess what? It still has to get voted on. And newsflash, Roger, you work for the owners. You don't have a say. I'm just kind of baffled at the fact. Roger that Goodell he, is the liaison between the owners and the players. You I don't have a really, say in the matter. Roger doesn't get to vote. I think it's hilarious that the competition committee has three out of the four teams in the NFC East. I wonder the, why. Bro, welcome to the club. That's I'm, that's I'm what I, I did see a tweet. I did see a tweet this week, and it was it was very funny. It said. Uh, we've gotten to Patriots level of hate where they're blaming the refs for our successes. No, I used dude. To, and then somebody said, I used to pray for times like this. <laughs> dude, <laughs> dude, like, welcome. Seriously. Like, this is like that's I'm where we're at. That's years. where we're at. They fucking hate us because we're the coolest team in town. It's so annoying. You are the coolest team, team in town. I mean, when your offensive linemen are making Christmas albums, like, yeah, I want to be part of that team, not the team that doesn't know what a fucking end zone is. Like, it's oh so God. funny how much, like, a game like today just shows how so deeply rooted we are in the brains and in the fucking thought processes of 31 other NFL franchise fans. It's awesome. 
It's really it's so fucking funny to me that like the brain rot that these other teams fans have and they just spiral and melt down when you present them with facts and it doesn't line up with their way of viewing your team. It just it sends me into a cackle like Heath Ledger's Joker. Rest in peace. It's so f- welcome. Just welcome to the dark side, man. It's a fun time like, over here. How are you going to hate from outside of the club? You can't even get man, in. They can't. Let go. <laughs> they um, can't. Here's so the money part, Pitts. Ready ready for this? You know, oh. we'll, we'll do our NFL wrap-up, of course, around the, the NFL like we always do. But um, newsflash to everybody, you know, might as well just say it. The Eagles season's over. It, it's over. You know, it's crazy. A game like today just determined our season where the Eagles entered today's game uh, with the best record in the NFL and the number one seed. And after today's game, Pitts, you know what happened? The Eagles left today's game with the best record in the NFL and the number one seed. It, it, but it's over. It's over. <laughs> I fucking hate you. Right the the sky is falling. The sky I is hate. falling. Listen, the Eagles listen. have the best record in the NFC and the NFL, and they they have the number one seed in the NFC playoffs. But, no. but it's over. It's all no, we were I, exposed as frauds because we lost a game. Oh my gosh, we're we're frauds because we lost a game, the third game we've played in two weeks, after we beat the defending Super Bowl champions in their house, after we drive down the field, kick a fifty nine yard field goal in the fucking rain to send it to overtime, and then our MVP quarterback wins the game in overtime. We beat our division rival after their linebacker breaks our best tight end's arm. But because today we got exposed, we're frauds. The season's over. The Eagles, they're a sham. You know what I have to say to the rest of the NFL pits? You know what I have to say to them? Uh, what? 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 They can S-M-D-F-T-B. Okay, I got the first three. For from the boys? The back. Oh, from the back. Oh, I was going from, from the, the back. Oh, from the boys. Okay. Um, so Kyle, this is what I have to say to any Eagles fan that is calling Besides that the season's season. over because we have the best record in the yeah. NFL and the um, one seed in the NFC playoffs. Listen, you don't know what pain is until your team holds their opponent to ten points or less three weeks in a row and still loses the football game because their offense does not know how to put the ball in the end zone. Not alone not only that, they don't have a competent quarterback to even move the ball downfield. Kyle, I would it, it's it's so painful to watch the success of other teams in the league right now as the Patriots fan and I'm really starting to feel a lot of empathy for the other teams that had to endure what we did to them over two decades. Now you understand and, why Super Bowl 52 was like so like Oh my god, dude. If I beat that Patriots team, oh my god, I would have stre- I would have went streaking if if that was my team. Like it I, I don't like as me who for me, I mean who is around a lot of people that are fans of different teams. I get it, and I start to, you know, it it helps digest the whole situation a lot easier. Where I have, like, you know, my friends here and, you know, other people that I talk to at work and whatnot, like, so frustrated, and you're just, they like, this look and feeling of the on their face of why, like, how is this happening, whatnot, like, it's just, like, I get it. I totally get it, man. And it's, it's awful. Mm-hmm. I I wish that we lost today, forty five to nineteen or 20, whatever it was. I think forty five nineteen. I think it was. Yeah. yeah, I would have loved to put nineteen points on the board, but no, that's not how things work right now. That's not the current state of the NFL. Plus, we don't have a goddamn quarterback. I I Kyle, I've said this at this point in the season. I think the next Patriots home game at the beginning of the game. They should hold a raffle, and the winning ticket gets to play quarterback for the New England Patriots. Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory shit. 
Why not? Did you see tickets today for a 10 minutes before kickoff for five dollars? I have picture proof. They were five dollars for a hundred a uh, hundred level. That's crazy. We are a we are a fucking joke. That's crazy, dude. Do you know what ticket prices face value are for some no. seats at the link right now? Like three hundred bucks a ticket. I'm sending to you, I'm sending you this on Twitter so you can see this too because I woke crazy. up to this. And I'm not gonna lie, if I was, I'm I'm that psycho who, if I saw this and had a friend to go with me, I probably would have went today for that low of a price. But I will send this to you right now. This is wild, bro. I can't believe I I've in all my years I have never seen ticket prices for any sporting event this low. That's wild. I wonder what ticket platform this was. No free ads. Yeah, I don't know. Let's see. I'd like to scroll down to the source. Here we go. I'm looking. Oh, that, that's crazy, too, because of the source that it was. Um, yeah, it's wild. That's wild. Um, but my biggest takeaways from today's game. One, we missed Dallas Goddard. On offense. He'll be mm-hmm. back against the Cowboys. Number two, run defense needs to figure some things out. Number three, use DeAndre Swift. And number four, Howie, go be Howie Claus and bring in Shaq Leonard and Zach Ertz. Zach Ertz feels simple. like a given. Like, I, I, if you don't bring in Shaq, I get it. You know, whatever. But Zach Ertz is right in your doorstep. Plain and simple. Like, go get those two, and we'll have a, a merry, merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. Happy Kwanzaa. Happy holidays. Happy Honda days. Happy holidays, Rita. The real. Merry Chrysler. Merry Chrysler. Um, those are my takeaways from it. Plain and simple. It's a game in December that you lost. Play lose them now. when it matters, and we'll see what happens. Yeah, lo- lose it now. Seriously. Exactly. Get it out. Exactly. Up. Sometimes you just need to get punched in the mouth. And the yeah. Eagles got punched in the mouth. Yeah, yeah, they did. Plain and simple. Um Pitsy, should we take a look at the tankathon? I guess. I guess I have to talk about the Patriots. That's Pitsy's Tankathon. Uh right now the NFL draft uh rankings and everything is I believe this is up to date. Um I hope it's up to date. I would assume it is because of how things transpired today. Uh, if the NFL draft happened right now, the Chicago Bears via the Carolina Panthers would have the number one pick, and Tankathon is mocking them to take Caleb Williams from USC. Your New England Patriots, Pat Pitts, have the number two pick in the draft. That would be that easily know. the highest spot you'd pick from in your lifetime, correct? Hands down. Where you are mocked to take... From the University of North Carolina, quarterback, Drake May. No, 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 dude, no. All right, he's going to be a flop. We know this. Like, I'm not – you got to go with history, all right? Like, history repeats itself. It's not hard. I saw a very funny meme that said – and it was funny because Mac Jones was on it too, but it was a bunch of, like, Patriots players, and it was like, Bill, you know what to do with the pick. And it's like – Hooray, I traded the number two overall pick for 20 years worth of seventh round pick. Yeah, because that's what he does. <laughs> and then the seventh round pick becomes like a decent player who's a good cog in the machine but does nothing for star power. Like, all right, this is what you do. You go get Marvin Harrison Jr. You make him your big star. You go out and get Baker Mayfield. Look what he's doing with Mike Evans. Seriously. Like, Baker in the Bucks offense is not terrible. And you get rid of Belichick. I know. I'm going to sound really controversial here. So, fuck, fuck, buckle up. I'm going to go Miami um, Dolphins touchdown celebration. Little, 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 
that yeah yeah we're about to go on a roller coaster here get rid of belichick all right have him maybe go into an ernie adams role just keep him around but like more football not operations you go get my guy over in the motor city ben johnson you bring him in you make gerard mayo dc or still keep him in there or maybe you just go get ben johnson be no you can't you can't go oc to oc that makes no sense no go ahead coach i like that coach just anyone with Belichick. Like, it's just he, the man. You're done. My dad and I would actually talk about this. It's funny. Um, when you get older and you see the industry or business that you've been a part of for your entire life change in front of you and you just aren't getting it, but everyone else is, that's a sign to step away. And from the personal side, I mean – my dad's not semi-retired and works three days a week and it could, he couldn't love his schedule more. That's kind of what Belichick's got to do in, in his world is take a step back. It feels very Andy Reed end of his Eagles tenure esque. Mm -hmm. We're like things, you know, started to just kind of fall away. And then the last year of Andy Reed's tenure, the Eagles go four and 12, he gets fired. And it was kind of like, it just felt like it was time. What? I feel like the same yeah. could happen to Belichick, where like it just feels like it's time. Let's move on. He goes to another team, potentially has success. Who knows? But it does kind of feel like it's time. It feels like it's time to go. It, it just, it just, it's got it. Something's got to change, and if it has to be drastic, so be it. That's how I feel. Well. Unfortunately for you, Marvin Harrison Jr., and for me, because I want my boy to have success, Philly's own, uh, but he is mocked to go to the team that I hope never has a smile on their face, the Arizona Cardinals. Um, the Eagles right now, if the draft started today, uh, would be drafting Adonai Mitchell, the wide receiver from the University of Texas, who is 6'4", 196 pounds. I love that. We have three superstar wide receivers then. Um, yeah, it must be nice to have more. You know what's also great? You know what's also great, Pitts, uh, from the C.J. Gardner-Johnson trade last year? We have the Saints' second-round pick this year. Oh, that's incredible. <laughs> Which right now is slated to be the 44th overall pick. It's not a bad pick to have. It's pretty good. That's pretty close to the first. Oh, I like that a lot. It's pretty good. Um, so, yeah, let's uh, let's do a quick hit around the NFL and the games that transpired in week 13. Cowboys beat the Seahawks on Thursday night football 41 to 35 and barely beat them. Uh the Colts in overtime beat the Titans 31 to 28. The Falcons beat the Jets 13 to 8. The Lions squeaked Ew. by the Saints 33-28. Well, close Texans survive the Broncos 22 to 17. The Chargers cover a five and a half point spread by scoring six points and beat the Patriots six to zero. Dude, that was the fucking. Are you kidding me? Are you that? <laughs> yeah, spread was five and a half. You look like the main character from that Little Planet video game on PlayStation. I, what? What the fuck? What do you want me to do? I. What? How do you want me to feel? <laughs> uh, tell me how you want me to feel. Tell me why. <laughs> it's so. <laughs> We're crying with a smile on our face, and it's just so not fun. Like I have to sit here every week and watch this just terrible team. <laughs> Trying to play football, and and everyone else is having fun. And it's just... He's genuinely crying for the people not watched on YouTube. I like a tear is about to fall out of my eyes. Like his, like, it's just you, you're complaining about you, you the Eagles like that loss. I mean, the Texans are making us look like fools. 
I mean, I'm not gonna lie. I, I, the Panthers are in shambles, but like, at least they, they got a quarterback. They own first round pick though. They have a quarterback. Do they? I think Bryce Young can be something. He's got one. I, I just he's on a team that sucks. It's looking, it's looking pretty bad though because it could have had CJ. Yeah, I don't, dude. I'm so over it. I just, I hate, I hate everything. Go Celtics, okay? How about uh, that? Go Celtics. Uh, the team that I wish no happiness and only misery on somehow found a way to win on the road and beat the Steelers 24-10. to 10. Um, That's because Kenny Pickett got hurt and Mitchell Trubisky had to play today. Um, Another UNC quarterback that was highly touted. And... The- um, <laughs> Look how that turned out. So um, there was weather delays in that game. Two of them. Like I've never seen that in the NFL outside of like lightning. Yeah, why was was there thunder or lightning? I have no idea, but weather was, delays. Was a Greek god coming down? Plus, like, I don't know. Uh, the Dolphins beat the Commanders forty-five to fifteen. What a roller coaster ride that was. Waka waka. Uh the Buccaneers squeak by the Panthers 21-18. Like we mentioned, the Eagles uh laid a stinker of a game. The Rams beat the Browns 36 to 19. And as we're recording this, it's late fourth quarter. The Packers have a 24 to 19 lead over the Chiefs at Lambeau. Yeah, it's a decent game actually. The Chiefs it Jordan Love was cooking, but but the Chiefs are coming back right now, which is nice. Taylor Swift is in the building. Charlotte Taylor for taking all the eyes off the Eagles' stinker of a game and putting them on the Chiefs once again. Maybe maybe you know what, Kyle? Maybe we just need to shake it off. Maybe hey, you know, what? Shake, you know what? You know what? You know what? We just had a nice little. We had we had a nice moment. Shout out Chris Long for this one. Um, you know, he had a, a moment on, on the tweet machine where he said this needs to happen. Uh, Noah Gray, anytime touchdown scorer hit. It's plus, eight, plus 850. Let's go. It's a beautiful thing. That's a beautiful, beautiful thing. I would love. Oh. Uh, for oh, more. Mahomes just got picked off. Oh, no. Oh, look at that. Some guy, Nixon? I don't. I don't know. Richard, Watergate. No, no. It was it was another controversial guy. Um, Pitts. Let's get to your power rankings. They're brought to you, brought to you by our pals over at W Energy. Yeah. They keep Pitsy and our whole company energized when we need it. I'm gonna need it to get through this week because yeah, my mood are. is killed. Uh, go to W.GG, check out all their flavors. It's clean energy, no jitters, no crash. Uh, amazing flavors like the beach and peach that I have down here in the studio right now. Uh, Pitsy loves the galaxy grenade. The big energy tears is phenomenal. The blue raspberry flavor, which Pitts, I don't know if you knew this blue raspberry just is a flavor. Obviously blue raspberries don't exist. Like it's not a thing. You know what blue raspberry is? Blue raspberries don't exist. No, it's not a real thing. Blue raspberry flavor is just raspberry flavor. But because what color are raspberries? I don't. Now you're they're, making me question they're everything. Red. Raspberries are raspberries are red. That's what I North thought. I, I just yeah. But because there's so many other flavors out there for candies, drinks, snacks that are red colored, like cherry, strawberry, sometimes watermelon is red, apple, uh, you know, different things. Raspberry was put into the the zeitgeist of flavors, and it just, like, never moved anything. Mm -hmm. So companies said, we got to do something crazy, and they made it blue raspberry because blue is a different color. It catches your attention, and that's where blue raspberry came from, and it went off the shelves without a hitch. So you're telling me... There is no such thing as blue raspberries. Blue raspberry is a fake fruit that is simply used for marketing. And it works because I'm a pawn. Blue I am a flavored pawn things. In your game. Blue raspberry flavored things are traditionally the best tasting ones. Dude, they fucking slap. <laughs> it's one of my favorite things. It's like 
No, what are you just, tell me it's next? just raspberry Santa Claus flavor. isn't real. It's just raspberry flavor, which oh, is man. just magnificent. Uh, there was oh. something that I just saw, too. Speaking of Santa Claus, somebody community noted that Santa Claus is real. There's a website that tracks him every year. <laughs> That's awesome. Go to W.GG. Clean up your energy game, just like myself and Pitsy. Use code underground for 10% off your order. Pitsy, I'm going to give you the full screen. Oh, okay. and then you Let's tell me. Right. Here we go. It is that time of the week again. Hit my Pitsy's is power rankings. Here we go. Number 10. It's it's Patriot. It's my Patriot peeps. Okay. Because whoever was at that game today, first off, applaud to you. But whoever watched that game, you deserve some recognition because of how awful it was. So you're coming to number 10. Number 9, the Titans. Big overtime win against the Colts. Shout out Will Levis. You got a spot at number 9. Number 8, the sideline judge in, I, I can't think of the game, but he broke his. Kamar. It was a Saints game. Uh, who broke his leg after Kamara ran into him and was tackled. So he gets number eight. I mean, he was writhing in pain. So sad. Uh, number seven, Christmas music is back. All right. This is when Christmas music needs to be played. All right. It's December. You got to prep for the holidays somehow. And the best way to do it is throwing on some good old Christmas It's with the Eagles music. Christmas album. Oh, that too. Obviously, download your copy today. Number six, the Colts special teams unit for blocking two punts. That's insane. You definitely special teams punt. matter. Special teams matter at the end of the day. Don't you forget it. Number five, Pat McAfee for the all-time troll job of singing the Georgia fight song, and then and then and then ending it with "Gotta take Bama." So he took Bama. Everyone laughed. It was awesome. Number and Alabama four, won. And Alabama won. So there you go. Number four, Mike Evans. All right, this man does not get the recognition that he deserves in the NFL. Con consistently having a thousand yard seasons, and on his way to that after this after this game today, seven catches for 162 yards and a ten touchdown. straight years of 1,000 receiving yards. Yeah, give like my man his flowers. Number three, the Dolphins, because I believe that they're the best team in the AFC, and they proved it today by scoring 45 against the Commanders. So, uh, I wish they were the Patriots. Number two, my Motor City Kitties, baby. The Detroit Lions stomping on the Holy Ones today in the Bayou. We love to see it. Sam Laporta got in the end zone. We had Amon Ron getting in the end zone. And the entire team was just biting off the kneecaps of some Saints. And then number one, wrestling. It's so back. All right. We had Undertaker presenting the big 12 title all right jade cargill presented a title to nelly all right they're just branding all over the place and not only is wwe back the elite company too all right it's so back if you're not watching it i don't know what i don't know what you're doing with your life and if you're a patriots fan at least watch that over the shit that you saw today so those are my power rankings for you this week oh i need that to run down Run back. Yeah, run it back. Run it down for the first oh, I threw that. Sorry. All right. So we got number 10, Patriot Peeps. Number nine, the Titans. Number eight, the poor sideline judge in the Saints game. Number seven, Christmas music. Number six, the Colts special teams unit. Number five, Pat McAfee. Number four, Mike Evans. Number three, the Finns. Number two, my Motor City Kitties, the Detroit Lions. And number one, professional wrestling. There is Pitsy's Power Rankings of the Week brought to you by our pals over at Dubby Energy. 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 There we go. Uh, just want to give a quick shout out to the Philadelphia Wings. Big time season opening win over the New York Riptide this weekend on Long Island. I was there. We'll be way more in-depth about it on the Outside the Box podcast this week, but we got to show love to the Philly teams across the board on this program. Uh, Shout-out to Mitch Jones, who has one of the most all-time player promo commercials for a team sponsor ever. I will send it to you. It is so funny in like the best I'm way in. possible. Um, it is like uber-Canadian accent 
athlete talking about Italian meats. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> it's so great. And it's in black and white. It's like very like Godfather esque. It's so oh, that's great. Miss Jones, eight points to start the season. The captain, the boy, Blaze Reardon, four goals in his first game with the C on his chest. And the Wings win 13 to 10. And it's unified standings in the NLL now. So it's just whoever has the best eight records make the playoffs. So every win mm-hmm. matters. Um, so shout out to the Wings What's for good? a big time win over the riptide uh pits let's let's shift gears to the hardwood in the nba it's brought to you by our pals over at kenwood beer the official beer partner of underground sports philadelphia who have these fancy awesome pint glasses available in their store i got mine uh this week i got my hat that came in as well that is absolute gaze gaze uh Jeez, bro Jeez, bro i saw some kenny kelly green crewnecks in the lots from pictures today on twitter uh and you can get kenwood beer by going to kenwoodbeer.com and using the kenny finder to see who's got kenwood beer on tap in the philadelphia pittsburgh new jersey or maryland areas it's 4.1 percent abv just 120 calories only eight grams of carbs Get it at your local liquor store. Find who who has it on tap. Go to KenwoodBeer.com. Got to be 21 or older to do so. And, of course, please drink responsibly. Pitsy, the the Sixers have been on a nice little back-and-forth run. They beat the Thunder last Saturday, and they beat the Lakers by the largest margin of victory in LeBron James's career. Uh, then they fall to the Pelicans uh, on Wednesday in New Orleans, and then somehow, someway, kept it close until the end. As the hospital Sixers, because no Joel Embiid, no Tyrese Maxey, uh, almost beat your Celtics in Boston. I know. I did not like that or appreciate that. The fact that they came that close and you didn't have your two best players, I don't know. That's It's very Celtics, though, of them to do that. Career uh, game for the man, the myth, the legend, Pat Bev. Patrick Beverly in this game. 38 minutes, 26 points, 8 rebounds, 7 assists. Okay. That's not bad from Pat Bev. And, I mean, it sucks to lose a game to the Celtics because we don't play you guys again, I think, until February. Yeah, it was like time. three in a row. It was like three it's in like a Three row. in the last month. It's yeah. crazy. Spread them at. Um, yeah, we don't play you guys again until Fe- February 27th. Ew. It's a long time. That's a long ass time. NFL season will be over by the time that happens. Um, wow. Thanks, Ben and it. We have breaking, we have breaking news on the hot stove pits. What what is this breaking news? The Atlanta Braves and the Seattle Mariners have agreed to terms on a trade. The Atlanta Braves will receive outfielder Jared Kalenic, left-handed pitcher Marco Gonzalez, and infielder Evan White, along with cash considerations. Seattle will receive right-handed pitchers Jackson Cower and Cole Phillips. Allegedly, this is a salary dump to the Braves so that the Mariners can make a pitch to try to trade for Juan Soto. Yeah, Juan Soto is going to be the talk of the winter. Uh, I've already seen my guy John Alba up in New York. He's making a pitch uh, for one of the New York teams to sign him. And I think that's probably where he ends up going. To one a lot of, the of rumors swirling around the Phils. You think he really would go to the Phillies? Um, there's a number of reasons I think he would come to the Phillies. One, he's best friends with Bryce Harper and Trey Turner. Okay, that's kind of... And our hitting coach, Kevin Long, was his hitting coach in... Oh, that's even... Okay. Um, Number two, in 2021, when the Dodgers were in the playoffs, Juan Soto and Kevin Long showed up in Trey Turner jerseys to sit behind, like, home plate to root for Trey Turner. Oh, okay. That's when he was playing for the Dodgers. Um, number three, the Phillies need a, a left fielder. Um, mm-hmm. so that way Brandon Marsh can play in center field 
and you let Johan Rojas develop more in the minors, mm-hmm. um, and then Christian Pache remains your guy off the bench, and then you have an outfield of Juan Soto, Nick Castellanos, and Brandon Marsh, and that mm-hmm. allows Bryce Harper to stay at first base. That allows Kyle Schwarber to be your DH and keep him out of the outfield. And then you have big boppers all around the lineup, and Juan Soto can hit the cover off the ball like crazy at a park like Citizens Bank Park. Does Bryce like playing first? I think he's cool with it. Like, I think it'll extend his career. And he that's said, what I think. Like, he wants to do it. Like, he was the one that offered to do it so that he could get back to playing quicker. Oh, okay. All right. So, yeah, if he's offering, then yeah. That's okay. You want to know a fun fact about Juan Soto? Yeah, I love fun facts. This is one of my favorite sports statistics of all time. I was talking about this the other day. Juan Soto, obviously highly regarded prospect when he was coming up and still a very talented player right now. Mm -hmm. Did you know, Pitts? Cue the bill. Did you know that? Juan Soto's first career major league home run technically occurred before his major league debut. Wait, okay. Explain this. I've seen, I've read this, I mean, but yeah. So the Nationals, uh, the year that Juan Soto got called up, I forget what year it was, if it was 2019 or 2018, um, they had a game get rained out, and the game had to be continued the following Mm -hmm. day, and it was a doubleheader to Mm -hmm. make up for it. So when you have a doubleheader, at the time, you get to, and still, you get to call up an extra person for your roster. Mm -hmm. Nationals need an extra player. They called up Juan Soto, and he was the extra player for the continuation of that game because technically that game started. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. the previous okay. day, mm-hmm. Juan Soto had not debuted in the major leagues yet. Mm-hmm. But because he was the extra player for the doubleheader, Juan Soto got a pinch hit at bat in that game and hit a home run, and then made his major league debut in the nightcap of the doubleheader. So so technically speaking, and on the record, in the record books, Juan Soto's first career home run occurred before his Major League debut. Bro, that's hilarious. It's one of my favorite sports facts. Like, I feel like it it makes me feel like so like knowledgeable. This is is why I do it. This is this is why we play. (laughs) This is why we get this is why this is why we do it. It's one of my favorite sports stats ever. Oh, that's so funny. Oh, I love that. Like, how cool is that? Oh, that's a wicked cool fact. He's the only player I think that that's ever happened for. I don't... I don't know. Don't quote me on that, but I think, allegedly, he's the only player that's ever happened to. Which is so cool. Yeah. And all the people who, this week, because I want to talk a little about, uh, about Juan Soto, too, before we go back to the Sixers. Um... People losing their minds on Philly's Twitter this week talking about uh, Alec Bohm being in a Juan Soto trade. Hey, newsflash bozos, Alec Bohm's an established player. He plays third base. Guess who plays third base for the San Diego Padres right now who's locked up long-term and is never leaving San Diego because he just signed the extension? Oh, that's right. A future Hall of Famer... (laughs) Future Hall of Famer Manny Machado is playing third base for the San Diego Padres. Alec Bohm is not going to be in a trade for Juan Soto. The Padres want established players. Like, the alleged, like, rumored trade for the Yankees to trade for Juan Soto included, like, seven players, and they're all young dudes under 25. Like, Alec Bohm, he's a great player in my book. He's a very good player in a lot of the eyes of Major League Baseball fans. He's 27, 28 years old. It's not like he's a young buck anymore like he was in 2020. He's a player that we drafted out of college. It's not like we drafted him out of high school. So he's a little bit older anyway coming up through the the minor leagues and everything. The Phillies, if they were going to make a trade for Juan Soto, it would be trading prospects. It would be trading a guy like Johan Rojas more so than a guy like Alec Bohm. Alec Bum's not going anywhere. Alec Bum and Juan Soto don't even play the same goddamn position, you fucking morons. The amount of people I saw this weekend that made my brain absolutely melt into goop. Is it the, the meme of the Titanic just oh singing my in the face? The meat grinder. The meat grinder one. Yo, I love those. 
Oh my god, dude. It is so crazy. Like, and this is the price of your team being good is you have a lot of younger fans, a lot of casual fans who didn't pay attention to the Phillies when they were bad, when they were making trades, when they were going through the rebuild. They don't know how baseball works. No, they don't. They don't know how baseball trades work. And that's the price of being a good team. You have a lot of people who are misinformed and in the literal sense of the word and definition of the word ignorant, they're ignorant to how baseball works. And that's okay. Just do your research before you hit send on Twitter and mm -hmm. make yourself look like an absolute buffoon mm -hmm. for doing that. Or as I should say, the word that I'm trying to bring back is a beautiful, like, backhanded uh, insult, doofus. Dude, bring back doofus. Doofus is a good one. Doofus is an underutilized word. So underutilized. And it needs to be brought back. Shout out to Lex, longtime listener of the show. I tweeted something about yeah, somebody boy. being a doofus, and she said, we don't use doofus enough. And I'm like, we I'm don't. determined to bring it back. I feel like now everyone's trying to go with, like, the expletive, like, call out to be, like, edgy or whatnot. Doofus no hits like, doofus so hard. Moron. Or it, it makes you draw like, just, back. I'm like, just Hearing simple. doofus or nimrod. Nimrod <laughs> is what I haven't heard in ever. Buffoon is all time. Buffoon's all timer. I love a good buffoon. Stooge. No, oh, I call crazy people Looney Tunes. I think we need. I to use that them. all the time. He's a fucking Looney Tune. Yes. I work with a bunch of them. I work with a bunch of goddamn Looney Tunes. Oh my lord, it's so funny, bro. I just. We need to start bringing back words like that because dingus, getting... dingus, dingus is a classic. I used to say that all the time. I used to get called that all the time. Like it's dweeb. Just... I love calling dweeb, but dweebs. dweeb is a select few. Like dweeb is so derogatory people. in the funniest way. Oh, you if you call someone a dweeb, like that shut you... your mouth, you absolute dweeb. Like that's an image that hits a mental image right there in your head. I think we need to bring that back. You know who's you know who you know what defines dweeb? When you look up dweeb in the dictionary of insults, it's anybody that works for pro football focus. <laughs> Literally. Like most of those dudes are dweebs. Like, dude, I just I can just picture it. Like the scrawny Because you know who the ultimate dweeb is, it's Chris Collinsworth, who owns Pro Football Focus. <laughs> oh jeez. Dweeb. Really? Chris Collinsworth? Yeah. So that's what I give my money to every month. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you dweeb. I'm a dweeb. <laughs> you're, you're, you're a dweeb merchant. I'm just, I'm a, I'm a follower of the dweebs. You subscribe that's to tough. dweeb as well. Oh, that's so tough. All right. Well, congrats. Um, Chris. But yeah, we're on Juan Soto watch a little bit. And apparently Otani's going to choose where he's signing in the next seven to 10 days. Let's go Red Sox. You want to know some, please. I would, I would kill. I, I think Otani's going back to the Angels. But why? I don't know. It's just a hunch. But apparently, allegedly, he's already been offered multiple contract offers that are $500 million plus. Yeah, it's included. The, the Sox are in the race, right? That's what I, I was heard. Well, you don't want to see your team in the race because if it leaks out that Otani met with your team – or any of this, he's holding that against you. I did hear that. Which so I think I is the heard ultimate, anything. like, dick-on-the-table power move by him. Okay, so good news. I haven't heard anything, so that means they're in the running. I've seen Angels, Dodgers, Blue Jays, and Cubs most, like, okay, circulating so as, like, teams still... Uh, but they're out. It got out. Allegedly. So those teams... So you just said... He might go back to the Angels. Well, they got out. Well, I mean, that's the obvious, though. Yeah. I take that back. The, the other ones. Players. The other ones, you watch out. And I haven't heard the Red Sox, so maybe this new I haven't heard energy. a lick of noise about the Phillies. You fucking stay away. All right. You can have Juan Soto. I want my Shohei Otani. The greatest Show baseball player. Oh, hey, Otani. Otani. The best. Oh, hey, Otani. Dude, the best is playing the show with him and my franchise. And when, anytime he hits a home run, I just start chanting that to myself in the basement down here. We got the, the one of ones up on the, the shelf. One of one, the greatest card pull I think we've ever had. Ever. Ever, ever. in the history of ever. And as soon as he signs that contract, that card's going to go all the way. True to roof and price. Dummy. Yeah. Yeah.
Yeah. It's gonna go. It's gonna go doofus. It's gonna go doofus. <laughs> <man. laughs> Pause. I'm going into doofus. Mode. I'm going into doofus <laughs> mode. That's ours. That's... I'm going. I'm going doofus mode. I'm going doofus mode. Yo, I'm about to go doofus on this. <laughs> Put it on a shirt. I'm going doofus. Yo, PHI Para, where you at? That's so <laughs> funny. Yo, my boy going doofus on the track. Doofus. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, can we get hashtag doofus in the comment section on YouTube, please? I want to see so Do many hashtag doofus if we've gotten to this point in the pod. If we get uh, at least 10, we'll put it on a shirt. Yeah, if we get 10 hashtag doofus in the YouTube comment section... By 10 individual users, we will put, we'll put I'm going doofus mode. Or just doofus mode. Just doofus, doofus mode. Doofus mode. mode. It's on a shirt. We'll design Simple. that. Um, but yeah, Sixers get back at it on Wednesday against the Wizards in the nation's capital. Uh, then they're home on Friday, December 8th against the Hawks. Then they host the Wizards on Monday, December 11th. Uh, then they have a home and home with the Detroit Pistons. Uh, and then they are on the road against Charlotte, home against the Bulls, home against the horniest team in the NBA. <laughs> oh, God, they're about to get deep-throated. <laughs> <laughs> uh, home against the Raptors, then they're in Miami on Christmas Day, at Orlando on December 27th, at the Houston Rockets on December 29th, and then at the Chicago Bulls on the uh, December 30th to end the year. So that's your rest of 2023 schedule for the Sixers. Let's move to uh, the hockey rink. We're talking hockey. hockey. And if you want to protect your, uh, your eyes from that ever-glowing bright ice that happens in a hockey game, uh, you can go to TomahawkShades.com. And check out all of their sunglasses, blue light plus glasses, their ski goggles, their prescription lenses. They're the best in the game. They've been rocking with us for years now. Uh, the best small batch eyewear in the game for a fraction of the price of the big eyewear companies. Go to TomahawkShades.com or download the Tomahawk Shades app and use code USP at checkout for 25% off your order from Tomahawk Shades, the best in the game. Go support Tomahawk Shades. They are the best. That's TomahawkShades.com or download the app in the App Store or Google Play and use code USP for 25% off your order. Uh, Pits on Thursday, the Flyers fell to the New Jersey Devils in overtime 4-3, to uh, nice. but then they rebounded on Saturday in Pittsburgh. And they defeated the Pittsburgh Penguins in a shootout, four to three. They play the Pittsburgh Penguins on Monday at home, so a home and home there with the Pittsburgh Penguins. Then the, they go out west to take on the Arizona Coyotes, the Phoenix Coyotes, whatever they are now, uh, the Colorado Avalanche, the Nashville Predators, and then they come home to take on the Capitals, the Red Wings at home. Then they go to the Devils again. Then they host the Predators, then they go to the Red Wings, and then they are back out west to end 2023 against the Canucks, the Kraken, and then the Flyers are playing night hockey East Coast time-wise on New Year's Eve against the Calgary Flames. That's, good. That's a good stretch of games they got there. Nice little stretch there, and uh, the Flyers, you know, not in not in second place in the Metropolitan Division anymore, but they are still very much in the mix. They're in a three-way tie for third uh, with 26 points. Just, uh, I believe, conference record or something comes into play with the tiebreakers or head-to-head. They're behind the Islanders and the Capitals right now. Um, so if the playoffs started today, they would be the five seed. So I don't know if they would make it. They would just miss out uh, because I think it's four teams from each division. Uh, in hockey, but they're still playing well, winning games, and uh, Sean Couturier with the shootout winner against the uh, the Penguins. Coots, there it is. Um, it's fun, like we always mention. It's always fun. It's 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 no pressure, no stakes hockey. Yeah, it's a good place to be. 
right now where you have no expectations of being a playoff team, but if you pull it off, it just gets you a little bit uh, more fan fandom. Exactly, and I mean, it was very funny. John Tortorella the other day in his post-game press conference, I forget what game it was, but it was like talking about, you know, stringing together wins and like playing well, and he's like, you're building something here, and just imagine like when – he, t- he referenced Matt Vemichkov, our, our first-round pick this year that fell to us at seven. Uh, he called him the Mad Russian. That's a what a name. What a fucking nickname. A great name. The Mad That's Russian. Name. Amazing name. Like... Love it. That's, that kid, that's, that kid's that's a stud. Lot. He's, he's 19 and he's playing in the KHL. That's a stud. Stud. Like, He's playing with grown ass men. Literally, that's insane. I'm sorry, he's 18. He's 18. Even better, he's 18 playing in the KHL. He's insane. He's got a hell of a jawline too. Oh, I love that. Madve Michkov, baby. Just wait till he comes over. Just wait until he comes over. It's gonna be a glorious. Just glorious thing. you wait. Um, we're all gonna be like Connor Bedard too. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, those, those, speaking of bonks. Let's get to our brink bonk bump of the week, Patty Pitt, shall we? Yeah, yeah, I think we shall. I think we shall. Oh, you no. guys know the drill, but if you're new, brink bonk bump is in honor of three pl- Flyers prospects, Bobby Brink, Oliver Bump, and Alex, or Oliver Bonk and Alex Bump. Uh, and it's basically... Oh, nice. We get we got it. We got a live YouTube comment on uh, our video from last episode. Uh, this comes from at egod03 on YouTube. You you just know this guy's a, a, a fraud and and just has he needs a hug. I think from his mom. Aww. Um, commented on the episode from this past week. Jalen hurts is trash. That dude got carried by his O-line. We exposed that dude today. Exposed us, Pitts. Exposed us. Exposed. One, one loss. We're exposed. We're frauds. Hey, you, I, you got 3 do, do you need a hug, pal? I, Gee, I think he needs I... Let, Let's Let's give him a virtual hug, right, Pitts? Let's, let's open up our arms. Let's just give him a nice little embrace. We're giving him a nice little, 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 little It's okay. Go. Let's hug it out through, it. through the yeah, screen. Let's hug it out, pal. Let's, let's, let's hug, hug that it out. out. It's okay. Just a little, little, there you go. Sometimes we all didn't get the necessary amount of hugs we needed as a kid. Oh, we didn't. Just some people came from households that didn't do that. And yeah. I, you just, I, sometimes I, you just need a warm embrace, a nice little hug. Um, but like we were saying before, we were interrupted by lack of hugs, EGOD03. Um Hashtag lack of hugs in the YouTube comment section. Um, Brink, bonk, bump. Brink is who was money this week. Bonk is who was horny this week. And bump is who needs to take a seat this week. Patty Pitts, I will start with you. Who is your brink of the week? My brink of the week. Um, Brad Marchand. Patrick, this fucking baby. guy. Brad Marchand had a hat trick tonight, baby. Natural hat trick too. A natty Dickie hattie. Pitts all, a natty hattie. And Dickie Pitts was all fired up upstairs after he took my Chinese food. So, and I got to go with my guy there. If you're talking Flyers, I'm gonna bring it into to the Bruins. I would say the best team in the NHL. So, uh, my hattie. brink of the week is the team on my chest, the team on my head, the Philadelphia Water Dogs. Uh, shout out to the PLL and Mike Rabel sending shout me a little out. water dogs care package. Got this awesome champion hoodie, champion hoodie. Um, dude, this hoodie, it's got some like heftiness and like weight to it, but mm-hmm. it's so comfortable. Like soft. I like soft inside, but it's got like that, like mm-hmm. kind of like not gritty, but like you can tell the material is like top notch type of type of hoodie. Um, amazing it's on the pll shop not an ad but like totally get this like you will not regret it it is so comfy um but the philadelphia water dogs have officially followed underground sports philadelphia on twitter and 
have officially followed ya boy on his personal Twitter. Now, why is that a big deal, you ask? Well, the PLL social media accounts, they don't follow a lot of people. They, they make it a goal. like It's mostly just following players, league, and like some specific media people. For reference, the PLL official account, like the main account, doesn't even follow me on Twitter. They follow the pod. They follow OTB, but not me. Let's let's fix that, guys. Um, yeah, yeah, that should be fixed. But for reference, the media outlets that the Water Dogs follow on Twitter, ESPN, which makes a ton of sense. The the PLL TV deal is with ESPN. Sports Illustrated, they do a lot of like media releases with Sports Illustrated. Hopefully, not the AI uh, Sports Illustrated writers. No. Um, Obviously, uh, Barstool and Part of My Take, because the Water Dogs were named on Part of My Take. Shout out to those boys. Um, they do a great job over there. And then they follow Underground Sports Philadelphia. For the personal, like, individual media members that they follow, or I should say, you know, digital creators as well, uh, they follow Field Yates. Ever heard of them? They follow Big Cat, PFT, Billy Football, Max, Philly Mays, Jake Marsh, and I believe they follow Memes as well. Mm. All the the part of my take crew. Colin Thompson, NFL tight end, who also has his own little podcast network, um, that's like doing really awesome stuff. Make sure to check him out. He does great things. Tory Smith has a podcast on Colin's network. Um, they do awesome stuff. Check out Colin. He's a mm -hmm. Temple University graduate as well. Um, played football at Temple. And then they also follow Erica uh, oh, Ayers. Uh, formerly, Nardi. formerly Erica Nardini, the CEO of Barcel. And then yours truly. What a crew. What a crew. A I'm one of 60. I mean, that's pretty, that's pretty fucking legendary. One of 60. Me. Shout out um, to the Water Dogs. Yeah, Water Dogs. Um, love that you support my boy and the brand. But um, how about you follow a champ? I'll be. I'm. Um, I'm. I'm a salute for follows. I'll be a fan of the Water Dogs. I mean, I already have two favorite NFL teams. I can easily. Yeah, have you know what I love too. My boy, shout out Christian Scarpello. He plays for the Water Dogs. Um, played for the Wings last year too. He's an Eagles fan. He loves all of my Eagles tweets whenever I get angry. <laughs> I love that. It's the best. That's incredible. Shout out to the boy. Um, so there's our brinks. Pitsy, what's your bonk of the week? Uh, it's all these horny IWC. For anyone who is a dweeb and doesn't know what IWC means, it is internet wrestling community. Uh, all the dweebs on the IWC that are swooning over Bailey, and then the new hashtag, Bailey is hot. And it's just people posting pictures of Bailey with the hashtag Bailey is hot, which I don't disagree with. Bailey is hot, but um, you don't see me uh, tweeting Bailey is hot. Oh, I stand. Well, Pitsy, up until a certain event happened, you were a candidate on my list. Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> dude, well, mommy came out to the ring i had you publicized to it and i said whoa 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 they had i was very much like whoa whoa mommy. wee whoa yeah well, have you seen mommy uh Damn. no D but, oh you got it. mommy is but you got lucky you got lucky because oh my, my bongo is fucking cory perry bro oh dude dude <laughs> dude that what is story that is that might be an all-time sports story. All-time. What a story. Um, so, allegedly, Corey Perry, who at the time was playing for the Blackhawks, has since been released or traded. No longer on the team. Allegedly, on a mom's trip of Blackhawks players, uh, had sex with Connor Bedard's mom. <laughs> This was allegedly. A story swirl allegedly this was a story swirling around um to which then Corey perry was uh put on waivers <laughs> so one can only conclude he fucked connor bedard's mom I had to i had to i mean we like, saw that what? happen 
We saw this happen in Boston. That's why Sagan left. Do you know that story? The best part is Corey Perry was apparently, allegedly brought in to be a mentor to Connor Bedard. There is no fucking way that's real. (laughs) I couldn't help a lot. I was sending these to our boy Dylan Mazzola. Oh, dude. All the time. Every time I saw something new, I was like, holy shit, holy shit. That's incredible. Dude, it was one of the funniest stories of 2023. That's so funny. Corey Perry is insurmountably horny. That he's banging the mom of the number one overall pick that he's brought to the Chicago Blackhawks to be the mentor to. <laughs> I just you, can't. You, this you so can't script jokes. that. Dude, there's so many jokes that are flying in my head. It's like an auction. Everyone's trying to get a piece. Just That's how my head feels right you cross now. Cross the blue line. Oh, man. <laughs> okay. Oh, wow. It's just incredible. I mean, it's literally a scene out of an internet uh, website. Um, cue the drum set. <laughs> cue, the, cue the drum set, literally. What are you doing, mentor? <laughs> He's just leaving Connor Bedard's house. He's like, make sure you treat my son right. Connor's not going to be home for 22 minutes and 48 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> His full commute is available at <laughs> Oh my god, dude. Like Check that out the is uncut so version funny. of Connor's commute Bro, home. That's so freaking funny. Dude, like, what if they banged in his childhood bedroom? Oh, they had to. They that's that dude. You can't have that story. Allegedly, all allegedly, allegedly. all alleged. What we're saying, all alleged. But imagine. Oh man, that's just the best. T's that's, and P's to Connor Pitar. T's and P's, uh, oh. and the P does not stand for Perry. But Corey Perry, you are the punk of the week. Because <laughs> my brother in Christ, good God, uh, Pitts, way, who... way to be. Who's who's your bump of the week, Pitts? Who's got to take a seat? Yo, um, this was gonna be my brink, but I'm gonna turn the tables and call it my bump. I'm going with Mother Nature. Okay, now hear me out. Mother Nature played a huge role in today's on a Sunday slate of games. The Patriots, I don't think, are in this category. They they shot themselves in the foot a long time ago. But we saw the Eagles game. Uh, we saw in Tampa it was a um, it was an issue. The Panthers game it was in or they played each other. Um, the Eagles game it was an issue. I mean, all over the league today, Mother Nature just won and wanted to assert itself into the NFL games. And it, it made for some shit football. I'm not going to lie. It made for some shit football. Cheated the NFL fans. I think next week, Mother Nature, you need to take a seat. You need to uh, mimic the Lord. And he took a day off on Sunday. You should as well. And have it be a nice, sunny, beautiful day, which is what all football fans want. My bump of the week is the college football playoff committee. Oh, dude, go off. Because to leave a team who scheduled big games against big conference opponents on the road, went to those teams, one of them being against LSU, and beating them in their own stadium, going undefeated the entire year in a Power 5 conference. Now, I am not a college football guy whatsoever. Not at all. But Florida State got absolutely shafted by the committee simply because their quarterback got injured. A thousand percent. I saw a, qu- I saw a tweet of a text message someone sent that said it would be like leaving the Eagles off the playoffs in 2017 right that's when they yeah. won 2017 when Carson Wentz went down with the, and got hurt 
Like that's and as soon as I saw that, it, it really put it in perspective because I'm not a college football guy. You need to explain it to me like I'm five years old. Yep, that's that where we're from. It is a it. as a northeast thing. Great comparison. So if that's the case, that fucking sucks and just should not be the case. We it just it shouldn't matter about the player going down. The team still went undefeated. It's pretty impressive. And on top of that, like Georgia doesn't get in the playoff because they lost a game by three with two of their best defensive players injured and out on a neutral site, and they get left out. But Alabama gets in because they win their conference championship game by three at a neutral site against Georgia. Uh, and they lost earlier in the season to the team that's the number three team in the college football playoff, the Texas Longhorns. They get in. Yeah, I just don't think Alabama should be in, but you have to have Alabama in to please the TV. The college football playoff committee during this run of four teams in the college football playoff has been an unmitigated disaster. They always get something wrong. It's always terrible. The college football playoff should have never been four teams only to begin with. Maybe I'll be more interested in it next year when it's actually a playoff and there's 12 teams involved. Yeah, it shouldn't be. But it should not be four teams. Four it's, teams is just – it doesn't do anything. It's so boring. College football, like we both said, does nothing for us. We follow individual players to see what they're doing to keep an eye on the yeah, draft. Exactly. Stuff, and that's all it is. Um, but the college football playoff committee – you're you're my bump. Shout out to DJ though, Michigan number one team in the country for the first time since I think the year he was born. Big come ups, big come ups. Um. So yeah, uh, our Brinks, Brad Marshan, the Water Dogs, our Bonks, the IWC, and Corey Perry, and then the bumps, Mother Nature, and the College Football Playoff Committee. Um. I feel like I'm forgetting something before we spin the wheel. What am I forgetting? I don't think I am. No, we're not. We shall we, shall we spin the wheel pick? Spin the wheel gets out of here. I love it. I love we it. We are we are looking actively for wheel sponsors, even though this has only been the third time that we will on the record spin the wheel. On the record, but I mean it's we have a wheel here that you guys see in the YouTube video version if you're not watching. Um that has six colors on it. We don't have any designation for what the colors mean. Maybe they will in the future, but for right now, we're just guessing. Um, Pitts and I both pick a color. We keep track of the colors that we picked, and we keep track of the color it lands on. Um, it's very fun. Just stupid nonsense, as Pitts would say. That's a, um, I'm the captain of all things nonsensical. So, so I'm going to set up the camera here. You might buy that again. That full go hat. <laughs> that captain's hat. <laughs> like this close. <laughs> really this I'll close. send you a link. It's in the description. I you, yeah, I think you might have to. Oh, man. It just makes too much sense. <laughs> so, Pitsy, uh, you got the wheel last time. I did. The first time, you son of a gun. Mm. Uh, it landed on blue last time. You have guessed green and blue. I have guessed red and green. And the colors it's landed on in the history of wheel spins, magenta and blue. So, Pitsy, red, green, yellow, blue, magenta, or purple? I'm going green. Everything around me is saying green. I am going with, in honor of the Water Dogs following, I'm going to go with purple. Oh, purple. So here we go. I'm going to hit go on the camera, and I am going to spin the spin wheel. The wheel. There's no way. Green. There's no way you got it two weeks in a let's row. Let's go! That's unbelievable. Dude, let's go. This is ridiculous. Nah, dude. It's dude, you gotta look for the signs, man. You gotta look for the signs. How are you doing this? Um, nonsense. That is how. And that's why I'm the captain of all things nonsensical. This is all crazy. Right. <laughs> dude, you gotta just open your eyes. See the signs. Wearing green, 
There was a commercial with Green. It's just, it's this is crazy. I am. That's why I'm the champ. Do we not oh. get this? I'm the champ for a reason. You have now gotten the wheel guesses correct twice in two weeks. Two. I know three. my wheel. I know my wheels. I did remember what we are forgetting. I just have to pull it up here. I saw this tweet. Uh, we'll end right. with this. Uh, this is one of the coolest things I have ever seen. I'm going to pull it up here and share the, the screen here. Uh, present, share screen. Here we go. This is from uh, Chris Backey on Twitter. Um, let's oh, normalize dude. installing backyard bars in our empty swimming pools. Dude, so if you're not wild. watching on YouTube, I re recommend like switching over to see these. So this is like a pool that is empty and instead of filling it in they have simply like built a way down and there's steps right here which i missed earlier i was like how do you even get down there but there's steps right here to go down that yeah, pool steps you yeah. walk down you've got like grass put down and everything and underneath where the pool cover is there's a little like uh almost like pool house type situation in the ground fire pit down there like got like uh mulch and everything and then you go in this little pool house and it's a full-fledged it's a full-fledged bar bar in an area where your empty pool is like i feel like i would get a pool dug up and installed just to put this in and yeah not an actual pool yeah um as someone with a pool, I don't think my pool has the capabilities to do this. It isn't that deep. I am going to find a house that has a pool, and my future wife is going to be like, great, we have a pool. I'm like, no. No, 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 no. No, no, no. No, no. The champ's got a better idea. And I'm going to do this, and everyone's thinking I'm a fucking lunatic. They're like, why have a pool and not utilize? I'm like, no, because I have a better idea. And then they're going to see the finished product and be like, why didn't I think of this? It's like, because you're not this guy. You, and it would be – that's – see, all right, here's the other thing. That is the perfect place to host. You are the party host forever. You get – that's all the holidays. That's 4th of July, all that. And everyone's like, well, where's the pool? Well, you don't need one. The bar's right there. You can still have your backyard. You can just put it around that, and you still have a party out there. Dude, this is like a revolutionary idea. This is like putting two screens in a basement. The best reply to this tweet – um is from at no context reply guy um, on, on the tweet machine. He said, you call it a dive bar. <laughs> yes, that, that is what it's called. You call it. It's no, it's not a, it is the dive bar. And then everybody's asking, I wonder how uh, they drain the water and people are replying. You put piping, a piping system underneath with a sump pump. Duh. Yeah, this is why we have. This is why you we have. You like, don't build that without having like the the extensive knowledge of how to prevent yeah. it from flooding. Yeah, this is not just you building Legos. Like this is real, real shit. We're staying on business. I I love this idea. If I could do this, it's to my so pool, cool. Hundred. Like imagine having that, and then it's just like sports themed. Oh, electric now, multiple TVs. A thousand, but I would, dude. You could make this into the. Dude, it's literally an underground bar. <laughs> I think we have a future idea to plan there. The also, I, I te yeah, that would be. <laughs> you're you're catching my drift. I'm picking you're, up what you're putting you're down. Up what I'm putting down. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. Incredible. Speaking of underground, no free ads, but um, I feel like they should advertise with us because it would be amazing. Um, did you see the new season of Fortnite is called Underground? No, but the fact that for, we we someone's got to start streaming. I'll yeah, I, I I got that text from Stephen McAvoy this week saying that we should stream it because the season is titled Underground Fortnite. You're catering to us, like we are underground. 
Yeah, just give me a day, and like I'll we will, we will a hundred percent like do this and collab with you guys and like show off fucking Peter Griffin. I, dude, I I have Fortnite. I download. I've been playing it with Big Ben, and I just am a banana, and I'm just running around as a banana. Like that is the content the people need. So like. If you've gotten this far in the episode, tag Fortnite on social media and let them know that like they should collab with us for their next season of Fortnite because Literally. underground meets underground. Like, let's make that happen. Come on, Fortnite. Like, Fortnite, get down, get down. Get down with the underground. We'll even call the studio Tomato Town for a week. Dude, I I will rename the cave Tilted Tower. Well, mm. We're not a tower. Like, yeah, we're both, Bro, we're both underground. We're... It makes too much sense. My logo is a tomato. Let's just put it that way. Like, we are a match made in heaven with Fortnite. Let's get just, down. Just make it happen. All right, make it happen. Fortnite, get down. Tag Fortnite on social media. Let them know that they should partner with us. Absolutely. Um, this has been a fun episode. The Sunday episodes are always a blast with you. Oh, a lot of fun, uh, make sure you guys are following us on the socials at underground PHI, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, threads, Facebook.com slash underground sports PHI, twitch.tv slash underground sports PHI. Maybe we'll be streaming Fortnite if they decide to come true for the boys. Um, follow Pitts on Twitter at Pat underscore Pitts and at Pitsy35 on the gram. Follow me at KBIZZL311 on Twitter, KBIZZLE11 on Instagram. Subscribe to the podcast feed, Apple, Spotify. Leave those five-star ratings and reviews. It really does go a long way for the show continuing to grow. Gets more eyes and ears on the show. Helps more people find Underground Sports Philadelphia as a whole. I was talking to my my boy Sean Bernard tonight, who does a great job with his uh, media company, PickSwap Media, like, he and I like talk about just like the independent type thing all the time. And it's like, we want to be your, your spots to go to for like Philly sports news, Philly sports coverage. Like we don't want you to have to feel like you have to tune into like ter terrestrial radio and see them talking about if vegetables are good or not on a Twitter poll. We don't want to see you have to go to, to TV, like come to us. Like we're fans. We're making content as fans for fans that has been our staple as a company since day one and we want to take over the fucking media scene in philadelphia so if you're with us we we love you tell your friends about us tell them to subscribe to the show and tell them to subscribe to the youtube channel youtube.com slash at underground sports philadelphia like we mentioned at the top of the show let's get 45 more subscribers on the youtube channel we're at 655 right now we need to get to 700 before the ball drops on New Year's Eve into New Year's Day. Mm -hmm. We want to start off 2024 with a bang, and that means 700-plus subscribers. So that way, early 2024, we hit that 1K mark. We can fully do everything that YouTube offers when you hit 1,000 subscribers. And then, you know what we're on, Pitsy, once we get to 1K? We're plaque chasing. Oh, we gotta get to we gotta get a plaque, dude. We're plaque chasing. We're then we're on to a hundred k. Um, so please, please, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Click the bell icon. Smash the like button. Leave a comment. Hashtag doofus if you want doofus mode shirts. Hashtag doofus mode. Need ten people, ten individual people to comment hashtag doofus, and we'll drop the doofus mode shirts. Um, but go subscribe to the YouTube channel. That helps us so much. Get your merch phiapparel.co code underground for 10% off your order and of course this show is presented by the city of Vineland and whether you're a company looking to expand relocate or you're a new business startup selecting the right location is critical to your success Vineland New Jersey offers both an affordable business location and an excellent quality of life the city's economic development department is a one stop source for moving your project through the development and approval process and their goal is to make this process as smooth as possible and to provide the fastest turnaround times in the region if you are considering potential locations for your operation contact the Vineland economic development team at 856-794-4100 that's 856-794-4100 Finally, New Jersey, where it's always growing season. 
And big thank you to Security 21 Security Systems and Paul J. Gillespie Incorporated for their continued support of this podcast. This has been episode number 591, a rare non-victory Monday edition of Underground Sports Philadelphia. We'll be back Wednesday night gearing up for Dallas week. Myself and Matt talking Sixers, Flyers, hot stove, whatever may come across the docket. Tune in then. But until then, we're going to knock up out of here. We are signing off.